think that we are in my friend Jordan Crane. <laughs> what is up? It is so, uh, I, I'm happy to have you here. Um, we haven't caught up for quite a while, but we just got like a quick, obviously, you know, we don't have a ton of time, but we got a quick rundown of each other's lives. Some crazy stuff has happened to you. Um, I, I mean, I just want to start it out with again saying, I'm, I'm glad you're here at the podcast, but I'm glad you're here with us to talk about this. And, and you know, what we're going to go into is, is what you've been going through as you know, your, your life recently. Um, but at the same time, you know, you're more than just that too. So if there's other things that you want to talk about and just hang out and, and dip into, I would love to talk about them. So Jordan Crane, you, uh, messaged me. I had a couple episodes of the podcast and you kind of like know the positivity stuff that I do. Um, you reached out to me a few weeks ago and we had a couple interactions back and forth. Um, you had actually commented about, um, in my first description, I mentioned the word C diff and it's funny because I was like, Oh yeah, it's just a, a little joke between Shaylee and I, because she's a nurse. And so I hear about the word house about C diff. Um, and you're like, well, I actually had it <laughs> and it's a pretty serious thing. And I was like, okay. And then we, we talked back and forth, but so I just got the lowdown. If you don't mind giving the listeners a little bit of a lowdown, what, what's been uh, like going on with you? What, what's your life? Okay, so like, well, I'm I'm gonna celebrate nine months um, clean from alcohol on the 18th, which is in a couple of days, which is great. Congratulations, wonderful. Thank you. I'm really close with my family right now, which is wonderful. Um, I just came from my mom's telling her about Your what I'm about awesome. to do. Yeah. I remember her from high school. She's so cool. <laughs> Your family sure, was good. Would love to hear that, but. Um, and you know, I'm just really trying to get back on track. Um, I had a rough patch. The C. diff situation was intense. It's hilarious that it's a joke because right. it honestly is so disgusting, but it is something that I went through and it's something that I can talk about because I'm actually really comfortable with nurses now and doctors and right. my family because my colon was talked about for about four years. Yeah. It's all on the table at that point. Yeah, it really is. There's, uh, my, I had to get a fecal transplant because of the, the, C. diff and my brother and my dad say that I got it from Brown University because it gets donated <laughs> from a college, but it's so <laughs> mean. Oh, it's so it's terrible. So, like, yeah. I just can't get away from it. But um, I'm much better now. Like, everything's healed. Uh, there is a chance I could get it again, but okay. um, the doctors are really careful if I get sick or something. They just get, they're really, I have to tell them what's going on and they say, okay, we're just going to go a different round of antibiotics or something that's right, right. easier to do on your system because. It just eats your stomach, like. Yeah, I, I can imagine. So, so back up, I guess. Let's for anybody who doesn't know, what is C diff? Let's talk about the realms around it and, and make sure we get a good picture of what, like, like we'll, we'll talk about how you got it. But what is it? Um, so, it's basically when you you can get it from a couple of different things, but um, when you contract it, it's you are given antibiotics and it takes out all the good bacteria in your stomach. Right, yeah and re replaces it with bad and so it, it's a growth in your stomach basically that it's an infection and it's really painful for people our age but um babies and children and then older people can die like, why, why is it more why is it more painful for our age I'm honestly or, not sure like they uh -huh. I, I didn't cover that part but um it was excruciating for me like i couldn't move but i know mm -hmm. that um, it's not that painful for other people. So is it, does it, it's pain in your stomach. Obviously there's a bunch of other things you're going through, but like, was it, so it's stomach related pains where you feel it? Yeah. Like the first time I got it, I was immobile. Like my stomach. Okay. Yeah. It was just, um, it feels like your stomach is eating itself. It's burning and cramping and it's and you just, can't alleviate it. You know, normally you can like, Oh, I'll go to the bathroom or I'll stretch or maybe yeah. I got a fart or whatever, you know, but also there's like a complete loss of blood. You lose a lot of blood. That's how I knew I had it Oh, um, okay. Right. for about a month. I was just eating broth. Like I was, I couldn't eat food and I was working a lot. So I was just like, I'm just too busy to eat. I want to okay. drink while I eat. No. So you were just kind of pushing it to the side. Trying yeah. To deal with it maybe too. Yeah. Not a big deal. And then I went, I was at work and I went to the bathroom and the toilet was full of blood. Awful. Yeah. And so I freaked out. I went yeah, to the terrifying. doctor and my stomach at that point was hurting really badly. And, um, they did all these tests. Like they could not figure out what it was. And then the doctor came and he touched the bed and I was like, please don't touch the, even the bed. Oh geez. And yeah. he's like, you know, I think I know what this is like, and he did the C diff test and I had C diff like full blown. It was, it had not been caught for a while. It was yeah. really bad. Okay. So it was from antibiotics is what, what starts it or so is it? I got it. You can get it from antibiotics. Okay. Um, I did get it from antibiotics, but you can also get it from feces. So people go to the hospital and they don't wash their hands that well. So it's contracted a lot at the hospitals, but it's also something that's going around schools right now because they're not using bleach anymore in the schools. They're using like, you know, 
easy for the environment, right. fresh scent. You know it's what I mean? It's not killing everything. That yeah. Needs, yeah. So people aren't washing their hands well enough, and it, they're getting it from the faucets and stuff like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, But I got it because I got the birth control implant. They put it in my arm, and then it got infected, and they gave no me way. antibiotics with penicillin in them. And I said, I'm allergic to penicillin. They're like, it only affects one in like 100 people. I'm like, I'm always that person. Don't do it. They give it to me. Oh, no. I come back with an allergic reaction. They give me another round of antibiotics. I get C. diff. Yeah. You poor thing. That's so awful. Okay, so you had the, um, I forget the name of it. What, what was the name of the one that goes in your arm? Is it, uh, oh, oh, yeah. Okay, so it, so it goes in there. Was it like weeks before you started feeling? No, the minute they put it in, I said, it doesn't feel right. And they were like. Oh, wow. um, so your body's just like, nope. Get yeah. That. And they were like, oh. Uh, no, it's fine. It, you know, it's it's something foreign in your arm. It's going to feel like that. And uh, so they, they taped it up. I went to work and I just was like an optometrist assistant. I lifted a chair to move it to the other side of the room and it tore open. Uh-huh. And so it started bleeding and I went in and they're like, oh, yeah, that's infected. I was like. Didn't it, I say it hurt? Yeah. And so <laughs> right. it just went down that path. And now. I mean, in this, this was like years of, so this was a whole process of, of dealing with this because you kept getting it too. Yeah. So would you, you would get healed, like you're feeling better and then it would be, it would come back or just. Well, it takes a long time to feel better. Like I okay. eat soup and broth and things that were easy for my stomach for a really long time. It's also super contagious. So I couldn't work. So, um, you're in the hospital a lot too, uh, cause I couldn't keep food down. Um, mm-hmm. I also was drinking at the time, so I was really mm-hmm. sick a lot. And so. They would keep me in the hospital for a long time. Um, I always had to be near a toilet, like, and one that I could use personally because it's really contagious. So I it can was imagine, just, like, trying to improve your life and, like, trying to just, like, live a regular life without just, you know, like, you can't even th- have a whole sentence without probably thinking about this sort of stuff, right? Oh, it was like, horrible. At all times, I can imagine. I mean, because me, I just know I've dealt with, like, you know, silly stomach pain, whatever, or, like, eating bad food and not admitting right. that it's a bad food or whatever. But, man, I... Yeah. That, that, that sounds terrible. So yeah. the the drinking, was it was it really correlated with that or that's just like that co- uh, compounded? The, you know, the, honestly, I drank in high school and stuff too, but yeah. it really started bad. I mean, I wasn't always, I was never a good drinker. I would, I got a DUI once when I was like 19. I, I always broke something like a toe or a concussion. You know oh, what I mean? Really, like yeah. I was never the cool person, but still... I started drinking every day once I had nothing to do every day. Like I was sitting at home, you know, and I was miserable and I couldn't go out. I couldn't see my friends. Most of them had kids at that point. I can't yeah. be around babies. I can't be around people. Right. So it was what just, else you do? I sat at home and drank all the time. And, and I just kind of like, I, I started nannying for my parents actually for a minute um, when I wasn't contagious. Cause I wasn't like, I couldn't go straight back right. to work, you know? Right. And, um, that was good for a while. That kind of started me getting out of my shell, but I don't know. I just wasn't happy. And yeah. so I just kind of kept drinking. I tried a relationship for a minute and that kind of blew up. And that was kind of when I, I had my parents set actually sat me down and said, listen, this is not okay. Right. Like, you well, oh, about the drinking. Yeah. Or, oh, okay. Because about- at that point, pretty much everything was okay with my C. diff. Right. This was like 2016. And so... I think I was done with C. diff at that point and I went into rehab. So, yeah. Okay. And so, I mean, you're doing better now, but you had some turmoil that happened in, in between that you had mentioned before. Like what, so your parents did, they, they gave you a, you know, tough love. Like we, what, what was that situation? Was that obviously a difficult conversation that you guys had to have? Or? Oh, it was terrible. You know, um, they had to watch me just completely like, I wasn't even a person anymore. I mean, it's, it was so bad. Like, I was just sick all the time and uh, I was up at weird hours and I wasn't working. I wasn't doing anything. After that relationship ended, there was a period where I didn't really leave my room much, like except for to drink. Like it was just crazy. And there was a kid in the house. It wasn't cool. Like I was right. needing to do something else. They told me and I knew. And so they said several times they were going to do it. And then finally they were like, this is crazy. We're doing it. So yeah. Um, That's a terrible position for all of you to be in, I'm oh, sure. You know. And I feel terrible for what I put them through. Like, But, I mean, that's just the start of it. it uh, unfortunately, that wasn't the only thing that happened. So I went to the rehab at Kaiser in um, Clackamas. There's, they have a little one in Kaiser Permanente, and I had my dad's insurance then. So, And I thought this will be great. I'll figure it out. I'll know how to drink when I get out. <laughs> right. I'll, yeah, I'll figure out my drinking. Yeah, like I'll meet some people along the way. Like it'll be all right. 
And I ended up like learning a little bit and talking to other people who had problems too. And um, unfortunately, I didn't learn enough. So, but my parents on the way out, uh, I was, it was like a 21 days thing. And they, I was like, okay, I'm ready to come home. And they're like, whoa, you're not coming home. Like, you are going to go to a program. Like, there's programs for people that can get out of rehab. And, like, right. it doesn't only take 21 days, unfortunately. What it, wait, so it, there is, so when you're done with rehab, you go, is that the typical, is it 21 days for rehab? Typically? You know, um, 30 days is pretty typical. Okay. That was just a private insurance thing. Now, okay. I've, that was my only private insurance. The rest have been state. And they have all been, like, 30 days. Um, a lot of them are like six months to th- or three to six months if you're going because of a court situation. But I went oh, because I wanted to go. Of so get yeah. Uh, so the the right after, so you do the the rehab itself, and then that transition in between. Is there? I'm just thinking for anybody who is going through rehab, if they're willing to do that, that's great. Yeah. Then that transition afterwards, I never thought about it, but I imagine that's probably like a scary. Like it's you so do it, and you're like, okay, like I'm clean, like I feel like I can probably, you know, I've been this many days, we're getting some momentum, but like. Now you walk outside, I feel like they're probably like, oh, what do I do now? So. Oh, yeah, it's really weird. Um, well, unfortunately, too, if it's your first time, you see a lot. It's like a, it's like a crash course of people's lives. You, know? you hear from people who have been there a lot, and then you hear from people who are just going there first time. There were a few of us, a handful, and I'm still friends with them today, which is cool. Um, we don't talk a whole lot, but mm-hmm. it's like high school, you know. But mm-hmm. um, the weird thing for me was the first time I walked out and I thought, I thought about living a different life, but I don't know if I was ready to do it. Mm. And so my parents told me I should go to a different uh, thing. So I'd set up a thing at this place called Exchange Recovery, and it's in Vancouver, and it's a pretty great program, but it is something that typically is like, you wanna stay for like two years. Okay. And you advance in the program, which is cool, but your life is pretty much recovery for that whole time, which is important for some people that works. Um, yeah. My friend Alyssa, she does it. She graduated from that program. She's awesome. married, she's doing great. Yeah, sometimes um, we need like a whole remapping if that's what you need, heck yeah. Right, yeah, and they provide that, and it's a church-based program, so if you love that too, it's great. all great. Like, yeah, I mean, if you could add the spirituality side of, of things, that yeah. gives a lot of, it's a lot of power in that. You know? Yeah, so um, I went there, and I actually almost had six months, and I was just not happy. I was really um, starting to boil down. The program is Christian-based, so they don't run. I'm a everybody should have the same rules all the time kind of person, and if they're varied, or if they're if they're changed for other people, it it makes sense because of recovery. But I didn't understand it at that point, so uh. I was like, why isn't this being run this way? You know what I mean? And they kept saying, you know, this is going to take you out. Like you need to focus on yourself and your recovery, and it took me out. So, oh, yeah, so I ended up going to a different recovery house. They have one that, they have them all over Vancouver. They're great. They have them everywhere, honestly. Spokane's a hot spot. It's nuts. But um, I went there. I lasted like three months and I relapsed again, but they gave me a second chance and I used it to continue working where I was working. And I was at Buffalo Wild Wings then. And then somebody at the house asked if I wanted to get my own apartment. And I was like, that sounds kind of tight. You know, there were there are so many restrictions in those kind of houses. And it's a group living situation, which comes with its own stressors. Yeah. And yeah. plus, you're just never alone, you know, and um, which is good, though. You know what I mean? If you think about it, you need that a little bit. Like there yeah. are different ways that it can work for everyone. But it's structure that's important in the beginning, I think. And right. So, yeah. For a ton of people. Yeah. But there are just struggles. So it's not all fun and games, you know. But I decided to go out on with this other person and I didn't know that the house I was living in was also for veterans. And so they didn't need to be sober to live there. So when I got there, I knew she had smoked a bit, but when I got to the apartment, she started drinking a lot too. And it was probably that point that I was like, you know, I'm on my own, I'm doing great. I had been working at Buffalo Wild Wings for almost a year. I was making my own money, I had my own apartment. Maybe I kicked this, you know, maybe I'm doing okay. So I started to drink too. Uh, I couldn't handle living with her. She moved out in a very ugly situation. Mm. And um, I just didn't know what to do. Um, I was really unhappy. I was drinking all the time. At that point, I think I had been fired from Buffalo Wild Wings. I started working at this place called Elmer's. And Did you feel that you had, like, quote, unquote, relapsed? Or did you feel that you had... I just had... felt like I had taken my life in a different direction. I decided okay. that I wasn't going to live sober, but I could handle it if but I you drank just, you felt in control of some sorts? Or... Yeah. Okay. But uh, in honesty, my life was so out of control. Um, okay. To backtrack a little bit of where my headspace was at that point, um, in high school, I my first experience with any sexual form was rape. And 
I was 15. And so it was just nuts. Like I got through it and then I was raped again in college. I have had boyfriends throughout that time and I've kind of talked to a couple people about it, like my mom for sure, but not really the help I needed to get, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I've had boyfriends also like serious and not. And in my experience, it's all been like sex is meant not for you, like it's meant for other people. Like it's something taken from you. Yeah, they're feeling their need. You're a part of that. Yeah, yeah. It's just not the way Mm -hmm. it should be, right? So I'm now super unhealthy. My body doesn't feel like a body anymore because of the C. diff, right? I have been examined by so many doctors. So many people know about my insides. I yeah, like it was just I was something that you wouldn't really think about actually. Is like I just feel like you know everybody knows about all of me, and it's I didn't even feel like that's a a huge vulnerability. It is. Yeah. Right. And at this point, I was only working. I wasn't really seeing my family because they had all expressed concerns. And I was like, done. I was just unhappy. I'm going to live this way. I just need to figure out like what my next move is. So I found out a friend. I had a lot of friends that I thought were friends and they actually mm-hmm. were just taking advantage of me. But um, she suggested this sex trafficking form of work. And I was like, I don't know. But Coming from my standpoint, not feeling like a human, sex mm-hmm. is something to be taken. It didn't seem such like a crazy idea at that it point. Feel, maybe. It kind of felt like maybe I'm going to get like, maybe this is where my part comes in. You know, maybe I get something for this finally. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, maybe it this is where I go. Think like that, though. I mean, right. Geez. It was horrible. Yeah. So, but I did it and I thought it was okay. And then I started like getting really sick. One time I went to the doctors and they tested my body for different alcohol and drugs and stuff and there were drugs in my body that I didn't take and I was waking up and the door was unlocked and nobody was there and it was really unsafe and um I was just scared all the time I didn't sleep at night Mm -hmm. because people knew where I lived um it was really scary not comfortable of course it doesn't feel like home not at all you have all these all these physical issues going on oh right you think you're getting it together of course yeah. So, so was you know, so you're going through you know this this crazy sex trafficking stuff. You're you're still drinking. Um, w- was was this around like a rock bottom for you? You or? would think it would be, right? So okay, I um, I'm going to the hospital at this point like once a week in the ER, which is causing a problem for what I do because you can't just disappear. So um, even if you're in the hospital, it's not safe, right? So um, I. I, my parents came and they were getting kind of weirded out. Like I wasn't answering the door when they came over. I didn't want them to come over. Of course. Yeah. Um, like there were just a lot of signs, red flags, right? So um, when they did come over, if I did answer the door, I was like completely incoherent. One time they came over and I was incoherent and they, um, for some reason they took my phone. I don't know if it was ringing. I don't know what was going on, but this was one of the times I was taken to the hospital that there were a lot of drugs in my system that I didn't take. And um, she was just out of it. Right. And uh, so pretty much they they took my phone and they saw what I had been doing, like all the texts, the things that had been said, the people that were involved. And they called the friend. I had a a friend that told me about it. Right. And um, I would just say why I was making money or whatever, why I had money in my account, why I was okay without a job, stuff like that, that I was um, working for her sister who worked in Mexico and she was making us purses and stuff and we were selling them here right and it wasn't a legit story but it covered for some reason some elaborate thing that pulled out yeah yeah and so uh they called her and she sold me out completely right she's like no this is really unsafe she was actually i've never made a purse ever yeah right yeah and she's like i'm not even her friend really like yeah it was actually really bad um yeah that blew up in my face right Right. so at this point now my parents know all the things that you would wish that they would never know right um my dad could like hardly look at me. It was like the most painful experience of my life, I think. And I um, and it's just a lot because nobody knows what you're thinking, right? In that space, obviously a person who's healthy and happy wouldn't make those decisions and put themselves in dangerous positions, all like life-threatening every day. Like that's what I was doing. I was just yeah. like, let's die. I don't care. And thinking that you need to do it or you deserve to do it or, yeah, or that's all that you have. Yeah, this is what I was made to do. Like yeah. there's yeah. never going to be Jeez. anything better. Like I had dreams of like being married before and like having a family and working a normal job, you know. I, I would have never anticipated. I, I didn't know any of these things happened. I would have never 
I mean, yeah. again, not that you just, oh, this person's going to have this thing happen to them in this right. life. Of course not. But, but geez, no. I, I mean, it's totally shocking to hear. Yeah. So you, your parents come over, they, they look through the phone. Did they, what, what happened after that? They, uh, they took me to the hospital okay. or I went to the hospital. One of the two, they might've, oh yeah, the, yeah, the drugs yeah. in your system, right? I woke up and they weren't there and my phone was gone and I panicked because I remembered them being there a little bit, but I couldn't remember where my phone was. Mm. And I emailed my mom. She's like, I have it. And then I knew everything was bad. So uh, they came over again and said, you know, you need to go to rehab and the hospital. And I think I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how it went down. I was a little out of it, but right. I went to the hospital. They found the drugs and everything. And um, I'm pretty sure that's about the time that they sent me away. Right. Or no, that's when I decided that I was just going to die. Like just, I was just, just giving up. You're yeah. just done trying. The hospital said if I kept drinking, I was going to die. So uh, I did. I just kept drinking, right? And I also just thought, you know, if I could just make another month's rent, probably I will die. So I did what I did, like, as much as I could. I mm -hmm. called everybody I knew. Like, it was horrible. And um, I didn't, I at the end of it, I knew I needed to go somewhere. Like, I couldn't do this anymore. My body was so sick. I tried to get a job at this fish place because I was like, I need to make money right away. Right. And um, it was like a like McGrath's fish house. And I, I got hired. I worked there 45 minutes. It was the day after I got out of the ICU. I was in the ICU for eight days, the hospital for four, right? Not in any position to go to work yeah, the geez, next dude. day. And, take a nap. Right. Like Valium for eight days sedated. You yeah. can't think. And I lasted 45 minutes and they were like, are you okay? Like, can you, I, I feel like you're not understanding me. And I was like, I'm not. Like, I just got out of the hospital and I can't work and Ugh. so they sent me home and i called my parents and i said i yeah this i mean being in that now. position jordan i can't imagine like the like okay I'm, I'm doing the thing you know i'm getting my life better but here i am i can't even pay attention you know yeah. I, you know that's that's got to be terrible well, too and my memory was pretty much gone like mixed right. with alcohol and all the volume it just took all time foggy. to get back well, yeah. and there's a lot of things that are going on in your life that it's like, I don't even want to think about those. My oh, memory, yeah. so, you know, who wants to think about my memory <laughs> when it's not too great lately? No. You know? Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah, it was just awful. And so uh, I went to rehab. I thought I did really good. And I got out and I had bills like the next day. Like it was, I I was not ready for what happened. I went to a, a, a clean and sober house, I think that time, or maybe I was at my parents. But regardless... Next day, I needed to pay bills. So what did I do? I knew how to make money. So I went and made money. And there right. was alcohol there. And uh -huh. I relapsed the next day. Oh, dang. So um, there were a couple of times that something like this happened. And one of the times, I um, ended up in a motel for like four days, like really sick. I was in the ER twice during that time. Like super dangerous. My parents didn't even know where I was. They were about to file a missing persons report. They thought I was dead. Like because I drank so much, they thought I went and crashed my car Jeez. died in the car because I threw up or something. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, in, anything could happen at that point when they don't know. Oh, they were so upset. One time I was gone and the cops came to my mom's house because I had I had hit something with my car and I had kept going. And people saw and they called the cops. Oh, no. And so the cops came to my mom's house because that's what the address said. Uh. And it was, they couldn't find me. And my mom didn't know where to send them. And so literally like my mom was like, Oh my gosh, she crashed her car. Where is she? Why can't we find oh, her? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, so you're you're having this just like you're constantly like going back and just not not what what changed? Like what so, I mean, you seem you seem so normal now. You're having a great conversation with me. Your right. eyes are bright. You seem healthy. You look good. Like what's what what changed here? What was this like flip? So, uh Unfortunately, it took me a few times, right? I had to go to rehab, like, I, I want to say five times. But this last time I had to go to Spokane. And well, I went to Spokane a lot. They sent me far away from my family because the more my family visited me, the more irritated I got because it was just mm. really hard. They were mm. really upset. There were feelings, you know. They knew what had happened. I had guilty. Yeah, it was I, I bet that made you feel a lot of shame, it you know, did. just by them being around. Just obviously, inevitably, anybody would. Right. So the person I worked with just kept sending me farther away so I wouldn't have visitors. And, um, I went to this place that had about 100 girls in it. And they, some of them, most of them, had come from a situation where it was either jail or drug correction, you know? And um, so it was kind of hardcore, honestly, for me. I was a little bit like, but the more you go to rehab, like, it's kind of intense. It's not your average day. It's a lot of intense conversations. You hear about stuff like this every day. Like, I'm not the only person who's gone through this. It's not weird at all. It's something that mm -hmm. is so common, unfortunately, for people in my situation or for people just with mental illnesses, like, 
or for people that have just been raped and set up to have a hard life. Like it's just, you know, or medical situations. There's just so many factors that can hit in home for people. And so um, I went to that rehab. There were about 100 girls. I was cutting at this point really bad. Okay. And was this something that new that you had started doing? Or pretty this... new, yeah. I had okay. only been doing it for like a month. Jeez, it's so crazy. Like you're just, you know, the, the opposite of getting better. You're just thinking that you need to be more in pain. I know. It's terrible that you were feeling like that. Yeah. And so um, the problem is if you cut at rehab, it's not funny. But I've been there a long time and I'm done now. So it is funny. And for people that have been there, it's a little funny. But you can't use your razor. If, they, if you cut, they take it. Yeah, of course. Go a month without shaving. It sucks. So <laughs> Do you have a mustache or what? No, <laughs> but your legs, okay? I'm a human. and You're warm. <laughs> so I just, I learned my lesson, like don't yeah, do right. it there. But the problem was also at this one that they were too big to handle a situation like that. And they weren't focused so much on mental health. Like they were, it was a behavioral health place, but not this I bad. Mean, there's a lot of problems with, with 100 people. Right. Yeah. So um, they kept sending me to the hospital. I went to the hospital four times in two weeks. And each time they'd be like, you're at a behavioral place, go back. So they'd send me back. So I'm at this place with 100 women. You'd think we're better with age. We're not in a situation like that. It was like a high school with women who should know better. And everybody's got a mental illness or a drug problem and a drug problem. Like it was rough. And they called me a psycho. There were oh, about no. me cutting. People like asked to help, but they didn't help. Like You wouldn't think there'd be a bunch of judgment in a place like that. Yeah, like, it was really rough. And so I kind of blew up one night. Um, and I called my parents and I said, I'm leaving. And they were like, what? And I was like, I cannot be here. It's not good for my mental health. I'm going to kill myself. Like at that point, there was a closet at the end of the hall that they left unlocked sometimes. And I knew there was bleach inside of it. Yeah. And I was literally. I mean, think about that sentence right there. Like, right. you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you, I can't imagine how that would feel. That's how it feels. You're having those thoughts. Like, yeah. oh, there's some bleach in that closet. That's what you're thinking. That's about. what I, and I, like, it, wants, I couldn't get know, it out of my head. Like, yeah, you don't want to be doing that. You know? No. And one of the times I went to the hospital, I told the ENT that. And he said, honestly, that's one of the most painful ways not to die. And I still couldn't get it out of my head. Like, it was just the only thing I could think of that was cause, cause as much damage as possible. Like, maybe I wouldn't wake up this time. Because after the ICU, I just. I thought I was dying when I was in the ICU because you're so out of it. Mm. Like when I woke up and was alive, I was so upset. Like Jeez. imagine being that way, like right. upset that you're alive and your parents are crying and they're all sad and you're just, I can't believe I'm alive right now. Like, yeah, you're, and, you're still inconvenienced by this life. Yes. Yeah. And so I did leave and I went straight to a motel. Motel six is kind of where I go. And you can always find skeezy people at a Motel 6, and uh, I don't <laughs> don't go there, honestly. Okay. But so you'll know why in a minute. So um, I went to Motel 6. I drank a bunch, and I called my counselor. Not my counselor. She's like a – she helps people get find places to go to rehab. And I called her, and I, my case manager, and I was like, this is what happened. This is where I'm at. She's like, I know your mom's called me several times, and we were wondering where you were. And I'm going to send you a cab in the morning and you're going to go to back here and we're going to send you somewhere else. And I was like, okay. Um, there was another place that was connected to that behavioral place. It's called COZA and they had a waiting list. It's a smaller program for people with really bad mental health. And so I was actually on that list, but it wasn't happening soon enough. So I left and um, the cab came and I went to the bus stop and there was a store across from the bus stop. So I picked up like four things, a little wine boxes, and I drank the whole bus ride. And I don't know what happened. I woke up in Seattle. I was supposed to be in Vancouver. I woke up in Seattle at 12 a.m. in a hospital. Jeez. I don't know where, well, I don't know what happened. I don't know if I- yeah, That's definitely the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they called the, the, like the police because I was on- the bus and I was drunk. I, I literally don't know yeah. what happened. Or maybe I, you just like thought you were genius and hopped on another bus after a couple hours or maybe? something. I don't know. Well, it was on the way. It's a stop. But it doesn't make sense that I was oh, in the Oh, you're hospital. going north Vancouver, Canada? From or? Spokane to Vancouver. Oh, from Spokane. Okay. Yeah. 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 Anyway. So um, I don't have a phone because I've been in rehab so much. I don't have a phone. So I do now. But I didn't then. So anyway, um, it uh, I, it's 12 a.m., right? What am I going to do? The doctors just gave me benzos. We already know I don't do well with those in yeah, alcohol. So instead of like they wake me up and they're like, you're going to or you need to go. And I'm like, what? Where am I? Like they're like, you're in Seattle. 
It's about 12 a.m. Here's your stuff. I only brought like one bag and a blanket. I had like suitcases. I don't know where they were at that oh. point. I'm like, what? and so um, I leave. I don't know what to do. I don't have a phone. It's 12 a.m. Everybody I know thinks I was supposed to be in Vancouver. I'm sure they're freaking out. But at this point, I'm really just thinking like, what am I going to do right now? So I go and see a bench in the hospital. And I sit down on it and I went to lay down and this guy with the security guard was like, you can't stay here. So yeah. I'm like, okay. So I go outside. It's freezing, right? Because this is um, February of this year. And I'm... Um, okay, so I'm, I'm, I kind of go to like a bar, but I don't have any money. So I'm like trying to figure out like, are there people around? Like, what am I going to do? And so I did have a little money. So I went and got some alcohol, of course, because what else am I going to do? So, Mm. and I kind of like laid down in like a little window area nook of a building and, um, more cops came by. You can't lay here. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense, I guess. But so I can't seem to lay anywhere. No, (laughs) (laughs) you can't lay here. So I, um, I walked, I just kind of kept walking. And at this point, I'm kind of more drinking more. I'm really out of it. The benzos are not good. I'm tired. I'm really cold. This is like 3 o'clock in the morning at this point or 2 or something, whatever. Oh, yeah. And um, I get pulled inside of a homeless man's tent. And uh, I think you can imagine what happens, you know. Um, I didn't know what to do. I had no phone. It was freezing. I had nowhere else to go. I literally stayed with him until the morning because... What if I left and something else happened too? Like it's a terrible thing to have to be afraid of. Oh my gosh, it was horrible. He was like smoking meth the whole time. It there was it was danger. He was so psychotic. Like he was like yelling at me in the morning as soon as I could. I got up, and he was like, "Where are we going?" Like this guy thought we were gonna hang out. Yeah, like this (laughs) is our life now. We're best friends. Right, and then I was kind of in my mind, are you think like thinking at this point, is this my life now? Like I don't know. Like what people don't even know where I am. Like so. I told him, like, I need to go call my mom and see if she can put some money because I had my card, like, in my account or something and I can get somewhere. And um, I go across the street. There's a bus stop and I use this stranger's phone and I call my mom and she was so worried and she put some money in my account. So we get on a bus to look for a motel and he's just, like, scaring me, right? You're still hanging out with him? Yeah. Do you want to hang out with the guy who just, like, raped you straight up? like? So, but I didn't know what to do. Like he was dangerous. Like how, and so he wanted to sit behind me on the bus. And so I saw a motel. I told him I'm getting off. And he said, like, you're not going to want to go to that motel. It's too expensive. And I was like, I'm getting off. So I got off and he didn't get off. And so I called the cab as soon as I got to the motel and I got as far away as I could. Like, yeah, because I didn't know what else to do and I didn't want him to come back. And um, so I ended up at this motel six. Right. So that's where I go. And uh, the I'm outside. I have a weed map and I got to be honest, this whole time I'm praying. Right. Because at this point, I'm kind of like, OK, God, tell me, like, is this going to be my life? Like, am I have I made so many mistakes that this is it? Yeah. Right. Um, like, can I ever go home? Like, how do I talk to my parents about this? Like, how do I tell them where I'm at? Like, I don't even know how to explain it. You know, my my own brother, like. Um, I had my, okay, so you know what? Let's keep moving real quick. I'll go back. Cool. So I go to this Motel 6, um, and this person is outside watching me use this weed map. And I'm like, um, talking to them about the weed map. And they're like, we actually have weed. Like, do you want to just come to my motel room? And I'm like, tight. Like, saves me a cab ride, right? Money I don't have. And weed will probably be cheaper from these creepy people standing at the Motel 6. Yeah. So they don't call. I go get it. I come back. I think it's over. I think they're weird that they don't want to talk to me. They come to my room at 5 a.m. and push their way in. And yeah. uh, they held me hostage with them for two days while they used my debit cards to cash fake checks. Holy shit. Yeah. It was two women and a man. And when the women and the man weren't there, or the man was always there. But when the woman was gone, like, the other woman would stay. And they were, like, smoking heroin and, like, it was so. I it thought, is crazy that there's people that are just living this whole different reality. You know? Oh, like and that you was just, like and they you had, just got pulled right into it and felt that you needed to be there, like that you deserved to be there. Well, something. and like I couldn't leave. Like the girl, one yeah. of the like, one of the girls was younger, and she was probably my age, and she was just like, um, she gets really mean. Like she was doing heroin and meth, and she's like, she's gonna freak out, and she will beat you up. Like she's, this isn't gonna go well yeah. for you. Yeah, she's like, you need to get out of here. And I was like, I can't leave. Like every time I went to leave. 
she would come and say, like, you're not leaving. I'm not done. That check needs to clear because she cashed a check and it hadn't cleared. Right. Yeah, this is hot. This is a hostage situation. I mean, they're using your money. Like, yeah. it, this is crazy. So I, um, I just couldn't leave. Like, okay, so the girl leaves and then another person comes and she's, it's like the middle of the night. And she's like screaming and she is on meth and she's like telling me that I don't respect the woman that took me. Like, I'm not giving her enough respect and she's got a gun outside and she's going to kill me. Like, she's like, this is ridiculous. And I don't know what happened exactly right there. But then she went to make a phone call to call the police because she got this feeling that her mom was in trouble. So she wanted the police to drive by her house, right? So then that girl that had been keeping me hostage hears that she's on the phone with the cops and freaks out on her. So she leaves. Oh. So I'm thinking, well, at least I'm not going to get shot tonight, right? And then the next day, the check doesn't clear. I pray, literally, like, God, if I am meant to leave, get me out of here. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to leave other than that. And I tell her, the check did not clear. I'm leaving. And she goes, uh, you need to wait. And I was like, no, I'm not waiting. Like, I'm leaving. And I open the door and I walk out and I had the cab waiting. And she literally was like, call me tomorrow. And I was like, what? Mm-hmm. Like, she let me leave. The man was there, too. Call me tomorrow. I called the cops as soon as I left. Yeah. I told them everything that happened. I told them what room they were in. And they never went and found those people. Mm. I'm not shitting you. I also called about the guy in downtown Seattle. But Do you think it's because they just see you as like, oh, you, you were a part of it. Like you're just. I don't know what they saw, but it was so unfortunate. Those people like cash fake checks. Like they had people's mail they had bags of mail i mean they're they're holding someone hostage they're holding a human hostage like, yeah I mean, they have heroin and meth like what more motive do you need to go there and what? they never went Jeez. yeah so um okay so so keep going with that you, you got out of there though i got um, out and i uh i ended up i think i came home Two of these stories might mix a little. Mike, my, right. my memory is still kind of weird. But you know, this you know, I just had a lost. podcast where I, I talked about my childhood before you came over a couple hours ago and I talked with Shaylee and I said the same thing. I was like, I'm not sure exactly if I'm like mixing these up, yeah. you know, because a memory with a lot of traumatic things are oh, is messed up. And, right. And I'm actually, and yours this is, is honestly yeah. pretty hard to relive. Like, and now that I'm kind of talking about it, no, it's, it's probably it's, well, the Well, thank you for keeping I've going. Yeah, I appreciate it's, this. But, uh, so... So one of the times I went back, I couldn't go home. I just, I had decided I can't go home. I called another friend of mine, right? I don't have any good friends at this point. So I call him and I say, this is what I used to do. This is who I used to work with. Like, it's dangerous. It's not good. But I think we can do it together. I go out with him. I wake up four days later in a motel room with people I don't know. My car is outside. I don't have the keys. I don't know what happened. I straight up don't know in four days. Like, I don't know if there's some video of me somewhere. I don't know who was with me. I don't know what I did. I don't I don't know if I was awake. That's a long time. Four days. Yeah, to not know. Yeah. And um, when I woke up, I had a legit, like, stand over you, watch what you do. You're not going in there without me, pimp. Mm. It was horrible. What? That and was I, a crazy position to, to be in. I didn't know what to do. You just wake up like that. I didn't, I yeah. don't know. Like, I don't what, know what, what did happened. I get myself into? Yeah. <laughs> what? Not even yourself at that point. Right. And I still don't know what happened. That person really won't talk to me. But I kind of texted him one time on Instagram, like, dude, what happened? Like, he was super mad at me. So I don't know if I, like, went out, took a drink of something and got messed up and was like, go home or something. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Like, could you could have just, like, peace out on him. He might not even know. He might be like, you just left. That's all I know. Right. I don't know what he knows, but I know he didn't really want to talk to me. It's so crazy that you have to, you know, feel like, you you know, you you have to put together what happened in your life. That's awful. And this guy has my phone, right? And he's starting to make like some kind of website and we're in a Motel 6, believe it. And uh, they're all doing meth. And I still haven't done meth or heroin, which is shocking, right? But um, I just didn't hit that low. Honestly, every time I was in this position, I was really sick because I'm an alcoholic at that point, right? Really bad. And I need alcohol. Like, I can't just not drink or eat. Yeah. And I wasn't. I, like, they weren't feeding me or giving me alcohol, right? They were just, so I don't know what they were doing. were withdrawing violently from Oh, it was horrible. I was so sick. And yeah. they kept trying to move us because, you know, you can't be operating something like that in a place for very long. Like motel people know what's going on and so um my back started to hurt really bad like a couple days later I I needed like constant ice or cold water on it like it was really hurting and I was really throwing up like I could hardly do what they kept asking me to do and so um 
he went to go get food or something and I wasn't alone, but he came back and I couldn't eat any of the food. And he's like, I don't know what to do for you. And he's like, I'm kind of worried like that you aren't okay. And I was like, I'm not like, and at this point he still had my car, right? And like my computer and all my stuff. So I was like, you need to take, he goes, what do you do when you're like this? And I said, I need to go to the hospital. So he took me to the hospital and he dropped me off and he took my car and my phone and my computer. And um, my parents don't know where I'm at. And apparently they got like texts during this time, but I didn't text them. I didn't have my phone. So I don't know what happened. But They were just like keeping up some story or something. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Jeez. And so um, my dad, I think I called him or something from the hospital because I was there for like two or three days mm-hmm. and they, my kidneys were failing by okay. the way. So that was, what and, and that's the pain in your back. That's what that was from. Yeah. Kidney, fail, kidney failure. And so they kept me to fix it. And, um, when I called the, the guy to come pick me up, he, uh, okay. So it was the day I was getting out. He called the guy to pick me up. My dad shows up and I'm like, dad, you need to leave. And you can do that in hospitals. Like you can say they can't see me. And so I was about to say that. And then my dad's like, we canceled your phone. You'll never find that person again. And at this point I'm like, I had, I'm sure. I was, I, I was worried. I was like overcome with fear. These people have my phone, my car and my computer. Like everybody's, everybody I know, pictures, where I live, who I, my parents are. I was right. just like, you don't know what you just did. You don't just disconnect somebody from a situation like that. Yeah. It's dangerous. Like what if they had tried to find me and they had my car insurance like in the car you know what i mean like my registration they have a million different ways of getting to you everything and so i freaked out and so bad that my dad dropped me back off in a motel six and i waited just to see if they would come back to find me and they didn't come back and so i tried to kill myself there in the motel six that night because the doctor at the hospital gave me benzos and i knew i could over like drink too much and so i drank a ton and then i actually tried to like burn myself with a coat hanger because i thought i could like get through the skin and I'd bleed out. Like it was, Mm. I was just done, right? Yeah, not thinking right. And so my parents got me back and then I went back to this rehab, right? Well, before that I had to stay at my dad's for a minute. And because it's not just easy. You can't just like be like, I'm sick, I need to go to rehab. There's like waiting lists and stuff. Yeah, there's so many. Yeah, and insurance and stuff. So I had to wait with my dad for a while. And at like one point I was alone with my brother and he was like, he said something about my phone or something and I was like, yeah, I don't have it anymore. He's like, yeah, that's right. Your pimp has it. Like, Hmm. like the, you don't feel like uh, it's going to get better. Right. Like at that point, like your family knows you're not a person like the things you've had to do that like beyond your control, you know? Yeah. You've had to completely strip yourself down to something that's not you, but it's hardly even a a person, you know, you're just, you're just out outwardly living out pain, you know? I, I can't imagine. So your your brother, like you and your brother, have always been pretty close. Not really, no. honestly. Like we no. were okay. Um, he's my only like blood relation. Well, you you seem like you were able to have good conversation. I guess that's we from were. What, what I knew from back in the day. Yeah, like I don't think I think he, there were a lot of mistakes I made in college, just like partying and doing silly things. Not anything like this, right? Mm-hmm. That he was like, I wish he would make better choices. But I think that when this happened, it kind of made him just feel like. Who is this person? You know, I don't know how I feel. I can't speak for him, but I'm sure I, I feel like from my point of view, I can understand why he might say, I don't even want to be a part of my life anymore. You know what I mean? Of course. And um, like, I didn't go to his wedding this year. I was out of rehab. I had six months clean. I could have gone like he uninvited me. So right. sorry. Um, it was just like, that's gotta be tough. Yeah. Honestly, toughest thing I think I've experienced so far, which is crazy. Right. So let's just say um, where I'm at now. So I went after all this, I go to the hospital and because I couldn't I couldn't get back. I kept drinking. I couldn't get back. And I called the cops. Right. So I'm in the cab. I tell my mom what's going on. She calls Michaela, my case manager. She calls a rehab. I get there to detox. They don't have my phone number and my information. I don't know what happened, but it didn't work. I couldn't go there. So my options were to go to the hospital and say, I will kill myself if I leave. And they admit you into the like the mental health ward. Yeah. And so then, based on that, they kept me for 10 days in the mental health ward. Then, through those 10 days, Michaela got me into COSA. And so I ended up at a rehab again. At the one that I could have gone to if I'd waited on the waiting list and not left that other rehab. Oh, way back when? Yeah. Uh. Well, actually, that, that was just March. This March. Okay. So the, the February I left that place, I was only out for like two weeks during that whole... 
Okay, and then Koza, is that the name you, you yeah. said? What, what is, how do you spell that? Uh, C-O-Z-Z-A. Okay, and it was that, that was good for you? That was... You know what, honestly, it was the best experience of my life. Okay. It was awesome. It was a smaller version of the other place, so there were people that didn't want to be there, sure, but it's, re- it's rehab. You don't go because you want to go. Of course. Um, but it was great. Like, they had a mental health counselor there that was fantastic. Um, he talked to me about how how my parents would feel if I died, but more importantly, just like how I could live. Like it's, and how thoughts are just thoughts, you know, everything's just thought until you make it in action. Right. Like, it and it's okay to have, nowhere. yeah. And people have thoughts, like it's okay to have them, but you know, like let them <laughs> the hell out. Yeah, like, you, yeah. don't keep them in there. Yeah. And you don't so, feel terrible. Don't beat yourself up for having them or thinking like, well, I guess I deserve this. Like, right. that's, like, you know, I guess I have to live with that homeless guy now or whatever, you know, yeah, just, like those it's are just not, thoughts. You don't, those aren't you. Yeah. And like how you can better your life. And like, I, I just like, it changed my thinking. I heard a lot of things there that I really liked and they taught us a lot about drinking and about how to like talk to people. Like, cause it's really hard. You know, I've been in rehab now on and off for a year I've been in, on and off in recovery for since 2016. Once you go through something so dehumanizing, it's weird that I work at an IHOP right now and go to church on Sundays and live a normal life. Like, it's hard to go from that to that. Like, yeah. sometimes I'll get really frustrated at work because somebody's upset that I got their order wrong or that the cook's messed up because... I was homeless last week. You know what I mean? Not last right. week, but like... Yeah, like this is not a big deal. No, yeah. yeah. So like it's hard to make the like conversion back to reality. Mm-hmm. Like because mm-hmm. your reality was so deformed. And so like I had a conversation with my friend Alyssa about it today. Like how did you do this? Like did you get frustrated with people? Because it's not their fault that they didn't have to go through that. Yeah. Thank God they didn't have to go through that. But it's hard. I mean, but you went through that and then now you're here like, I mean... P- you're here like telling the whole story like being brave and so that definitely gives a ton of people i'm sure you've already given a lot of people a lot of strength just by telling it so thanks for that but but I, it's crazy because it, it makes me think you know like you, you're the worker at i like we don't think about that like we're just at i hop and we're just like man i'm so bummed about my pancakes being wrong or whatever and it's like that person like that person just went through the most crazy last five six years of her life <laughs> You know, literally, it changes our interactions when we're interacting from from day to day. So, um, so what what would you say since you you know you have been to more than one rehab? What would you say was like different about this one? Like what you know, obviously there's a few things that were profound. Like oh, those are just thoughts. You know, right. that was probably a huge thing. Just like I don't have to follow those; those aren't me. Yeah. But like what what was different about this rehab center? Um, not all of them are co-occurring, like mental health and alcohol or oh, or oh, drug. Okay, okay. Yeah, any drug. Um, but. A lot, some of them are just geared toward recovery, like for our, for drug and alcohol. Like I had mental health problems. I don't honestly believe I have them anymore. I was literally like healed. I don't have the same thoughts I had anymore. I don't, I mean, I'm a normal person. I have using dreams sometimes mm-hmm. and they freak me out. I wake up and I'm yeah, like, like, oh, shit, did I, <laughs> nine months down good. the drain, you yeah. know, but um, like, I prayed, I'd gone to church. My parents have been praying for me forever. Um, I think God finally just answered a prayer. Like he, I don't feel, when I got out of rehabs before, I was always like kind of bummed to be around people who drank. Like I couldn't, I don't know, I just couldn't be around it. Now, I mean, I'm fine with it. Like if you need to drink, that's fine, but I just don't. And yeah. I don't feel urges like yeah, like you're you're actually in control. Yeah, not like well, I, I'm in control until I get in front of it. You know, yeah. I mean? I'm sure that's probably a, a difficult thing to. to it do. used to be, yeah. yeah, and I'm sure it is for a lot of people. Like yeah. it's really uncomfortable. I don't think people think about that. Like, um, because people don't, they shouldn't have to change their life for you. But I think people should like consider that you're really struggling. Like I always think about like Twilight, honestly. Like because when you bit like for the first time, it feels like being around humans feels like fire in your throat. It's a little factoid. Oh, ooh, I like yeah. that analogy. There so you go. I want people to think about that. Fire. Like you're yeah. putting the alcoholic or the drug addict through that when you bring that. It makes me that uncomfortable. It used to, right? Used to. Now, I don't care. Like I'm just, yeah. I kind of get frustrated like when people abuse it, you know, I'm like, I just wish you knew how unhealthy it was, but. Right. Well, that's just because you care and you're right. like, I know how bad this could be. Right. You know? That's all. Like, but it's just it's just different now i love being around my family i have a nine-year-old sister she's freaking the bee's knees and um i'm just kind of renewing relationships i didn't make it to my brother's wedding technically i wasn't invited but 
we're gonna we're gonna skip past that because right. we've seen each other twice since then and it's been wonderful and i think oh I, good to hear yeah and i was happy you know what jordan you have a whole a whole rest of your guys's life oh yeah to experience good times together and, yeah and you know you, when i can see where he's coming from you know I, I think that it's important to know where somebody's headspace is before they make those choices i think mm. I, if i could talk to him i would probably just like real honest one time maybe i will but i think i would just probably like say you don't know where you, I didn't just go out and say I want to do this like I yeah. want this life like help me be horrible you know like yeah. help me be miserable but um I did you know I found it unfortunately and you know I wouldn't I, I wouldn't have tried to embarrass anyone like I would that's not where I was that's right. not even what I was thinking and I'm sorry if it looks yucky but it just happened like yeah. <laughs> and it was dangerous and it's something that can happen to a lot of people like well, that's something that you clearly see, like that you reached out to me, like you're willing to talk about this and, and be so honest about it. I mean, that's just that typical, you know, we always hear it like, you don't think it's going to happen to you. Like, I, you know, Jordan, I knew you like I feel I didn't know about any of this stuff. Right? I, I didn't know that any of it happened. And well, now but it, it is cool. I, you know, something I was thinking about as you're explaining this to me, you're telling me about this, like this girl who's in a hotel room and you're doing these things. And I'm just like, what you're just like this smart well-spoken person to me the the, the door that i know so it, it's it's cool to you know there's i'm sure there's a lot of parts of you that you had to like refine and there's new parts of you that you discovered but i mean it's it's i hope it gives somebody a little faith of like you know if they're if they're listening to my podcast in that hotel room right now like up, dude, dude you you get to be normal again one day and, and well and, and not only that but like be, you don't you have know. to be in that situation like yeah, yeah. i mean and and it's not your fault. That's the most important part. Right. Like, because I was just like, no, this is just the way my life is going. Right. And I think that it's important to say that I had a friend who had a worse situation than mine. Like, she had a really hard life. Her name was Megan Mager, and uh, I met her in treatment, and she passed away a couple months ago from a mm. overdose because that fentanyl is like crazy up in heroin right now. And yeah. she had eight months clean. She was doing great, but it was just a bummer. So, she had she wanted help. Like, and she couldn't, she can't now. And so I just thought that was kind of my point where I thought I need to talk about this. Right. And then all of a sudden you were like, C. diff. And I was like, I know that. Like, <laughs> I know that's like, so like the fact that it, you know, and what's funny is you messaged me and, and I was like listening back. I was like, I don't think I actually, cause sometimes I'll edit out. Like if I get rambling for too long, I'll well, edit yeah. out some of it. But I think I edited out even the joke that we had about C. diff. Literally. So, cause I listened to the whole podcast yeah. cause I was like, I want to hear what he says about it. And then I was like, yeah. it's not on there. And but you know, what's cool is, I don't know. I just like the, the fact that it led to you messaging me and yeah. now you're here and you know, there's this many, like how many, there's a lot of women who are going to have a lot of strength from this. You know, Well, and so. like there was a point where you were like, if you want to come on my podcast, let me know. And I was thinking like, nah, I don't have anything to say. And then I was you like, certainly wait a do. minute. Yeah. Like, yeah, I just live a crazy life. Yeah. Yeah. But there was a minute where I was like, I don't think I need to say anything. And then I thought, no, I kind of do need to say something because yeah. like, I don't know. I honestly, there's a person I know that's kind of starting to seem like going through something I went through, like mm. where I was working, but I, my life was just kind of in turmoil. I was calling in a lot and I was sick and mm -hmm. it was starting to show at work. And I kind of, I feel like I need to talk to that person too. You know, like, I just feel like I, I don't want to be overbearing, but like if I could help somebody or just say, listen, I have been there. And if you don't want to mm -hmm. do what I did, like there are other choices. Right. Yeah. There's, there's a ton of other choices. Get help and know that you deserve help. You oh, know? There's right. so many ways to, ways to get it. I, I think just, uh, I, I always like to create this, you know, like with this podcast, especially, but even just like our friend group is just like changing. Like my, my personal close friends, we're, we're starting to get to the point where we're having these open conversations that are like, instead of when that person's not around, we're like, oh, yeah, so-and-so is drinking a lot. Like, eh, we're all uncomfortable. It's like, like, hey, like you love that person and it's going to be hard, but maybe have, have a little bit of a conversation, yeah. dance around it, maybe ask them a couple of questions. Oh, we're starting yeah. to all trying to like make it to where it's okay to talk about these things like it's okay to go to your friends it's okay like you don't have to like you know no i go, think it needs so to be talked about i think that honestly this whole i mean my mom was even like are you sure you want to share details like what if you what about the backlash you know and i honestly just asked like a couple of my close people like is it going to embarrass you in any way and they said no and i said, said okay then i'm going to do it like awesome. um i just feel like it needs to be talked about because like when I first started doing this, like when that friend told me about the service she used, mm -hmm. there are people in this town who use that service to call mm -hmm. people, to call me. You know what I mean? Like 
I know people. So like it, this is a thing that needs to be talked about in our town because there are people using that service. So I'm sure there are people like me I just having to work on it. I just don't think that the person on, you know, like like you were obviously going through some pain, but I just think that if you're in a position to be using that, you, you probably, if you don't think you're going through pain, but you're using a service like that, I feel like you probably, there may be some things that, that need to be dealt with in your oh, life, man. right? Like, yeah, I think so. I, I would say. Um, one thing I do want to talk about, so um, something that I have noticed, like our age group, so you've probably noticed even outside of the situation, um, so religion, when it comes to like spirituality, religion, yeah, everyone's so uncomfortable about it. I like I, I have a friend who, uh, who, he's like a wonderful human being. Like I, I love talking to him. I like, you know, he, he's very interesting, intelligent. And we were talking, we're going on about like music production or some, probably something science or something cool. And then he started talking about religion yeah. and he was like, I remember his voice got quiet. He, he goes, well, so I'm, I'm a Christian. Yeah. And, and, and I remember like just thinking like, dude, you shouldn't be ashamed of that, you know, no. but, but it's our, our, society is just super weird you know uh, like we feel uncomfortable talking about things so really what what i would love to hear from you jordan is is how, um, you mentioned religion you, you said it plays an important role in your life now what, what what has it given you like like how has how has religion added to this how is so it's huge it's my whole life like okay. i would not be here today without god and i'm not ashamed to say it like awesome. um i let me tell you about my living situation. Um, I live here in Longview now. I was living in a, a group home uh, out of rehab, you know, like I should. And I was miserable. I was just, um, I was working two jobs. I, it, this was just three months ago, right? I was clean, but it was, I had kind of started, I almost started to cut again. I was like, ugh, oh, no. you know, um, is this all that is going to, like, did I get clean for this? Which I think is a feeling that a lot of people have. Okay. And um, I came home and I talked to my mom about it and she was walking with a friend from church and the friend was like we need to call I'm not going to mention her name but this other lady because she she can pray over you she's going to school like to learn more about God and stuff right mm. and um, just about healing and things like that and so she comes and she prays for me a week later she texts me and says I've been talking to my husband and we would like you to move in with us what? and they live in a huge house they just built it like last year and their whole downstairs is meant for like chillin and there's a bathroom down there and a little like tiny tiny like sink and kitchen area almost yeah. and a room and I come in the garage and I stay down there and I live there for free they just felt called by God to oh, help me that's beautiful yeah and like um I I don't feel cravings for alcohol anymore and um, I have I don't take any medications I was on so many medications for mental health for not craving for for shaking, I shook like crazy. I thought it was gonna be permanent, like I because of drinking, like you get the DTs. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I shook all the time, and I was afraid it was gonna happen forever. And I don't shake anymore. I mean, I shake like if I'm nervous, I might be a little shaky right now. But um, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm I'm healed, like legit. I think I'm healed, and mm -hmm. um, I've gone to the doctor since I've been back. I they told me when I was in the ICU that I had the insides of a 55 year old who had drank their whole life. My mm -hmm. insides are all healed. Like, I don't, I mean, it, things are great. I yeah. I just feel like I've been healed. Like, it's been amazing. I go, they had a couple of requirements at the house, right? So I, I read a book a month that they suggest, which typically is pretty cool. Like, the first one was mm. great. The second one was kind of rough. But the, the third one's pretty cool. And um, Would you recommend either of those three? Like, to any, just any, any reader or? I would, re I would recommend Ep Epic Faith. Like, e Epic Faith? It, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's like a story. And. The cool thing about it is the people I live with met the author and went to the place in the book with them. So it's oh, like, what? it's it, the person's a real person. Like, it's a real story. Yeah. It's awesome. And, like, I think it's been here around town because Columbia Heights Assembly had people read it for a while. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's well, a great book. Well, just, just as someone who I, you know, I, I'm still very open about, uh, I, I just love exploring you know, my spiritual path is new to me too. Like a year mm -hmm. and a half ago, two years ago, the whole spiritual thing, like I would just kind of joke about it. Like, I don't right. know. It just wasn't for me, you yeah. know, but I, it's cause I didn't know anything about it. But yeah. so, so I find myself like, I, I am enthralled with, with all the religions. Like I, I just, I like learning about all of them. So yeah. I, I love learning about, you know, I'll read, like if I read that book, I would enjoy every second of it. I'm sure if it's right. a good book, I, yeah. I'm able to read these things and not be like, oh, I don't agree with this or I disagree with, you know, right. I feel like a, a lot of our age group gets caught up with that sort of thing and they yeah. don't really give it a chance, you know. When a lot of people like they, I feel like they acknowledge that the universe is good and like they're being called and things, but that they are kind of placing it on the universe when like 
I feel like it's God. Like, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I also don't push it on people. Like, right. you know, I feel like they they'll come to it. You know, I've known God my whole life, but I've never been this close to God. Yeah, and felt such things. Yeah, like right. healing. That's like something that you read about. But like, yeah. my body is healed. Like, I feel like a different person. Like, I'm able to speak about these things. This just happened in March. Like, yeah. it's December. I'm talking about it. Like, it's just things are different. Like. Um, I still have problems, but like not rough, like but you're not like that. To face them. Oh you yeah, know, you, and I just feel stronger. Like I feel like I was put through those things to help people, not to sit and like I don't know. I almost kept them for myself. Like okay, I've been through all that. I deserve to keep it a secret. You know, I deserve to just yeah. live a better life. But well, in telling I feel people, like, you get nervous. It's like a, like because you don't want people to treat you different or or like uh, treat you like you're fragile or something all the the time. That's what I would always hate about. Like, I just talk with Shaylee about the same thing about the podcast. I just, you know, I just want to, my life has returned to normal now and I want to tell you about it, you know? So, but I'm okay. Like, yeah, Yeah. like, I mean, but always check in on people, but like really Mm. I'm not a victim for sure. You know, if anything, like a survivor straight up, you know? And, um, but I'm a part of this like new believers group. I go to the promise church in Woodland. It's freaking amazing. And, um, they do a lot of evangelism there, which is pretty new to me, but okay. they're like finding new people who believe in God all the time. And it's pretty neat. I um, I technically, I feel like a new believer because I'm just at, like coming in to believe, of like, you know, coming back, I guess. But I've never known God like this. So I think I should be a part of it. But I go Thursdays and then I go to church with my family on Sundays. And right. so. what, what, what do you do? So I haven't been to a church for so long. I remember I went when I was younger. Again, I even when I was younger, I enjoyed learning about it. I didn't know yeah. what I what I knew. But um so if anybody you know is church a place that you can kind of like if you felt like going in the back and you wanted to walk in or like like if you're if you're struggling and you want to like i don't know maybe i should learn learn a little bit about religion or what what is christianity about yeah. like what what is that i always like to describe that little step from nothing to like it feels what, like what a family say? it's really weird right yeah? you think that like I'm falling into a family yeah like you think uh, like me especially i haven't been treated like a human in a long time like oh, right. You know, I've been treated fragile. I've been treated like a slave. I've been treated like a drug addict, yeah. you know. A but, way of means for someone else. Right. I've never like, I mean, since high school, right? Like, or being younger, I haven't been treated like like a person. And so right. I walked in and I felt like a person again. Like, they didn't treat me like a fragile person. They saw who I, I was right then and they liked it. And like now, since then, I've told them all kinds of things, but I don't, like, they haven't changed the way they look at me at all. And... They don't judge you and they want to hear about your problems. They want to help you. They want to pray for you. Like, oh, they're so inviting. And like um, the Holy Spirit, like I can feel them around. Like when we go to places like that and like they always have Christmas lights in their like house, but it makes it like feel like it's like just straight up glowing. Like it's a good place to be. Oh, I love that. I mean, you you can feel that. I went to, uh, we were just, Shaylee and I were just in London and we went to the, I might be missing a word that's in it, but the St. Peter's Church, mm-hmm. it's uh, it's just the prettiest thing ever. Like, and the, again, the spirituality is new for me, and yeah. I'm I'm so incredibly open to, to like all these new experiences that I'm just like, what does it feel like to be in here? Right. And the feeling in that building is just like, I don't, I can't put. There's not words for it, but there is something that's that's here. You, you know can what I mean? Feel it, right? right certainly. Yeah. And so you know, I. I, I think that that is open for anybody, you know, like, yeah. like it's, it's something that you deserve to feel like, you know, and, and that's something that if you're like, what's, what's life all about? There's no meaning. And you're in this like terrible downpour. It's like, uh, uh, you know, l- look into that. There, there might be something there that there'll be a little bit of a spark. Oh yeah, yeah. seriously. Um, like not only that, things are happening like around the world right now, like really good mm-hmm. things. And I mean, bad things too, but like, there's a lot of healing happening. Like, um, like my mom had a hurt back, her back's healed. Like, really? yeah, like there's, there's a place called the healing room in, um, California and like amazing healing happens. Like this lady was driving and on the way she got healed. Like she didn't even got there yet. Whoa. And then, um, I pre- I'm pretty sure it was there. There was le- legit a baby like that this lady walked there and it died on the way and she mm-hmm. still brought it there Holy and it, whoa came back to life like i'm not i'm this is gonna freak you out but like you know i've been learning about a lot of stuff like this this lately too i'm i'm not afraid to like check into it like i mean miracles man i mean they got to have some sort of sort of sort of basis like oh yeah like i just feel like i don't know i I feel like it needs to be talked about like i Mm -hmm. think it's cool um I think it's great to explore too you know like like a lot of times we see stuff or we see stuff or we hear about it and we're like 
it's so weird and so different that I feel like people are gonna make fun of me if I talk about it or feel like we're so weirded out by it we can't but it's like yeah. we, we got to talk about it you know these are people are, are their lives are getting better like yeah. that's something we should explore right <laughs> yeah like and if I mean if it's not for you I guess that's okay yeah, but that's I, okay. I don't think there's any harm in trying it like worst case scenario you get greeted by a lot of friendly people you know what i, know. I mean yeah. i think it, i think it matters which church you walk into because some of them are kind of strange but i, I highly recommend the promise yeah. church they're doing some crazy things there right now it's pretty neat and yeah. um and like even the pastor talks about addiction like he was addicted mm-hmm. to pornography like straight up and he'll tell you that yeah. and he'll tell you how he's doing better now and like they're people too he's a human yeah, yeah they're all humans That's wonderful and it's just a place to go and be a human you know, be thankful for what you got. And right. I think that's the coolest part about that New Believers group. It starts out and they talk about, um, they give thanks for anything that happened in the last seven days. And I always have something cool to share. Like, is it funny? Yeah. Oh, and then I never think like, oh, seven days, like, oh, that's not a long time. But like, it was, it can be as simple as like, I went to my little sister's birthday party um, for the first time in like, three four years sober this last weekend hell yeah oh it was so dope that is like, huge that's great yeah and <laughs> i just got to be a part of it and i like said i mean she's nine now so she she can say things she she'll say to me i like you so much better now that you're not drinking and mm-hmm. i'll be like oh my heart like but um she i i said to my stepdad like i just loved being there he said you were such a big help it was so nice and i said it was just so nice to be there like yeah. i would have done anything to be there like and rory goes i liked that you were there too and I was just oh, like, ah, this is great. why I live right now. Like, Yeah, that's so great. I mean, in knowing that you deserve to feel those feelings, because right. like, I mean, there's so many times where you you would have never even dreamt that that would happen, but there was also right. probably even times where you would have blocked those feelings from happening. I know that me, yeah. like, um, you know, it's it's obviously different with your traumas, but it's, you, you think that you deserve to feel these things, but it's like you can trace it back from like, way back young you're like oh i i started feeling that i needed to i deserve to feel these bad things way back this far um so the initial just jumping back the initial you talked about what happened when you were 15 Mm -hmm. um i think that that admitting that and talking about that i I think that there is a, a lot of a lot of people who are living with these things still inside them yeah um you know, like we see, like, I'm not talking about like, like pop culture and the media and all that stuff, like people, you know, whatever. But like, I think there's a lot of people who have things that have happened to them when they were younger, um, whether they're like what happened to you or, yeah. or, or not. But I, I think that speaking of them and admitting that it did happen and talking with someone you love about it or talking with someone who will listen, um, to, yeah. like go, going to, you know, there's plenty of religious communities, there's plenty of spiritual communities, there's plenty of rehabs too. Mm-hmm. And admitting these things, I feel like just from my experience from um, talking to, to other people who open up to me just as a friend, yeah. when those words fall out of their mouth, like, I, you know, I, I was raped when I was 15 or, or these things, like, I mean, just them saying that to someone is, so is, is so powerful, yeah. right? And, the, and that healing. I, I, I think like that moment there, like when the, when it happens, like the, you know, because I felt healing that I've even like come to terms with things that like with myself, not even to another person. Yeah. But that healing, that's definitely a spiritual thing too. Like that, that melting away, the chiseling away of like, oh, I'm not holding on to that thing by myself anymore. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's pretty powerful. Um, we are getting up here in time. Uh, so we're, uh, we'll, we'll do another, another five minutes. We'll just wrap it up. So, um, Jordan, seriously, thank you again, like for, for being brave enough to like hit me up, to come here, to continue, just to like, tell me all your story. Like, uh, I, I'm thankful that you're alive. I'm thankful that you're here sincerely. And I'm thankful that you're going to, uh, you know, I'm sure the next few years for you are going to be, you're probably going to help, help quite a few people just by being honest in yourself. So I I'm excited so. to see what happens. Um, do, do you have any, anything you want to leave any listeners with here? Or I don't know. I'm just like thankful to be talking about it. You know, um, mm-hmm. I think it's important. I think that this is going to hit home with more people than I, than people really think. Like, yeah. Because it's probably, if with people in rehab, it's like 100%. Like, but, you know, there's also people who have never lived that kind of life. But um, like rape is something that happens all the time. Yeah. And like for my particular situation, it was like a group of high school kids that like n- were really well known in our high school, like a bunch of seniors. And it was like a bet, like who could do it first. Yeah. And I, w- I just happened to be alone with the wrong one at the wrong time. And 
I never said anything, you know, I won't ever say his name or whatever, but, um, and that's fine. If you do want to report it, do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I chose not to at the time. That's, and that's your decision. That's, right. That's, that's, that was your life. You get to choose. Yeah. That's. And so, um, but it's just like, I wish that high school boys knew that they weren't just messing around. You know, it's not a bet. This like that's like thing. a really important thing for girls, like, and boys, like that's just important. Mm -hmm. And to make that somebody's first experience is really just not Terrible. okay. Yeah. And so I just hope that people kind of like listen and just know that people have feelings. And then like, even as common as like, or even when we were talking about like, um, me being at work, like having somebody be right. mad about something, I think it's important to get people thinking like, you never know where the person's been that you're talking to. So like, make sure that you right. would just talk to them how you would talk to, you would want somebody to talk to you. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's really, it costs nothing to be decent to people. Like yeah. we're all people. And so. And it makes, I mean, it's, it's just better walking around when you just have every single person that walks by you instead of just seeing them as like some quick object. It's like, yeah. it's a person and they were a child once yeah. and they had, they, you know, their, their virginity experience was different than mine. Right. Like just, just remembering all these things, like this is a whole person with their whole intricate life. Oh yeah. If you can just like reinsert those. Yeah. At like all let's time. just be nice. And like, it's Christmas. Like, gosh, I wish people yeah, would just Merry be nice Christmas. for a minute. Like, I yeah, know, Merry dude. Christmas. Yeah. Get off your phone and say hi to the people around you. That definitely is a thing. Yeah. Well, Jordan, again, I appreciate you and uh, in, any listeners out here who is, who is, w if you're at any stage in your life and you're before the healing process, if you're on the healing process, just know that, that you deserve to be on the healing process. Yeah. You deserve to be on that path. And, and, you know, you might, you might, you might be in the cave now, but, but like, look at Jordan, you know. Oh gosh, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. I mean, it's still hard. So like, don't, it's not yeah, Oh, easy, no doubt. Yeah, no. Oh yeah, you're, you're perfect. Everything's healed. Right, but you but know, that's what I'm saying like, is being on this path and being open about being on this path is, yeah. I mean, we could just having these conversations, even having them to where it's like, okay, you know, I'm going to have a, if you're a mother right now and you're like, I have a teenage boy, like, I wonder if I, I have to have that conversation with them. Yeah, like maybe, maybe just, you do. I don't know. Right. A little so, knowledge about it yeah. wouldn't be hard. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't hurt anyone, you know? Certainly. Yeah, yeah. I just think it's very interesting the way, because they're having, I mean, everybody's having sex younger anyway, but mm -hmm. it's just like a really tough situation. Yeah. We, we can't act like it's not there. That's for certain. Definitely. It's, uh, you know, these, these are hard conversations to have. For but they're sure, important. But. I mean, look where it could go. I mean, this is a really exaggerated, horrible experience, but yeah, right, I, I just think it's more common than people think. Like you yeah. just end up where you end up. And, um, I think you, you don't have to accept that. Like, you can just grow. Yeah. Like, things can get better. Like, you deserve better. Absolutely. All right. Well, be brave. Everybody have a good rest of your day. Junk out. Love podcast out.